China CF kids I am so glad you have joined me again for week 12 hands up if you have been with me for every week uh, up until this point hands up nice and high I see you there's a few of you that have been trekking along so we've been doing this chronological study since March through the Bible so for those of you that have been tracking with us for the first 12 weeks great job I hope that you've been piecing parts of the story together into God's bigger story which is kind of the whole reason why we're doing this but anyways, how many of you noticed some of the changes in those pictures in the pre-service video? Some of them were maybe easier to spot than others, um, but I hope you had a lot of fun with that. I thought this morning we could actually start off with another little game. And so here on my table, I have a tray of things from all around the church. Okay, and so how this is going to work is I'm going to give you 30 seconds to study all the things on this tray okay it's going to come up on your screen as a picture so that you can see it better than on my table here um, but before we do that you're going to pause the video i need you to go get a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil okay pause the video now all right does everybody have their paper and pen you're all set and ready to go great job okay the picture is going to come up on your screen in just a couple seconds and i want you to study it long and hard okay for 30 seconds and here we go have it all memorized now all right now I'm gonna take my blanket I'm going to cover over my tray and I want you to write down on your piece of paper as many as of the things on this tray that you can remember okay so you're gonna have a one minute timer come up on your screen and uh, write as fast as you can all the things you can remember and here you go
You got it all done? We are gonna actually go over the things on the tray uh, so that we can see how many you got, okay? So we had a Kleenex, a mitt, fork, scissors, computer mouse, pen, pencil sharpener, post-it notes, hand sanitizer. You don't wanna be anywhere without that these days a boat, and some tape. All right, hands up if you got all of those. That would have been pretty tricky. Um, there's a lot of things on this tray and a lot of things to remember, but maybe your memory's better than mine because I probably would have remembered too. Um, okay, we're gonna try one more thing, okay? So this time, the picture's gonna come up on your screen. I'm gonna put this back over here for a second. I'm gonna do some changing around back here. And this time, I'm gonna have the picture come up on your screen, but it's gonna be different than it was the first time, okay? And I want you to tell me if you can see what has changed on our tray, okay? So here comes the picture. Can you tell which it is that's changed? Shout it out if you can see it. I can almost hear you, shout it a little louder. Right, all right, the mitten and the scissors changed places. And speaking of things changing, um, in our story today, something changed, and I think we better watch it and see what happened. Jacob took his family and all his possessions left the land of his uncle Laban and headed home to Canaan. Going home meant that Jacob would see his brother Esau again. Jacob was afraid that Esau would still be angry with him for stealing his blessing. So Jacob sent messengers to tell Esau that he was coming. When the messengers came back, they told Jacob that Esau was coming to meet Jacob and he had 400 men with him. Jacob was very afraid. God had promised that his family would be as numerous as the stars, but how could that happen if Esau was going to kill them all? Jacob made a plan. He divided his family into two groups. If Esau attacked one group, maybe the other group could escape. Then Jacob asked God to keep his promise. Jacob prayed, please rescue me from my brother Esau. Jacob sent a large gift of animals, goats, sheep, camels, cows, bulls, and donkeys to try to make Esau happy. Maybe then Esau would forgive him. That night, Jacob moved his family across the stream where they might be safer, but Jacob stayed behind. A man appeared. The man was actually God himself. The man wrestled with Jacob all night. Jacob refused to give up, so the man injured Jacob's hip. Let me go, the sun is coming up, the man said, but Jacob would not let him go. I will not let you go unless you bless me, Jacob said. Your name will no longer be Jacob, said the man. Your name will be Israel, because you wrestled with God and men, and you have won. The man blessed Jacob. The sun came up, and Jacob limped because of his hip. Now Jacob looked and saw Esau and his 400 men coming to meet him. Jacob went to meet Esau. He bowed down seven times to show respect to his brother. Esau ran to Jacob and hugged him. He was not angry anymore. The two brothers cried together. Esau returned to his home. Jacob and his family traveled to Shechem, and Jacob bought land for them to live on. He was finally home in the land God had promised him. 
God changed Jacob's life and gave him a new name, Israel. Jesus came so that we might have a changed life, forgiven of sin. Jesus' death and resurrection provided sinful people the way to be adopted into God's family. When we are adopted into the family of God, we also receive a new name, Children of God. Did you catch what changed in our story? That's right, Jacob's name changed to Israel. God not only blessed Jacob, he gave Jacob a new name. Jacob meant deceiver. Kind of accurate from the stories that we've been hearing about him, right? His new name was Israel, which meant struggles with God. Remember our story from last week, how, how Jacob wrestled with God? And God changed Jacob from the inside out. From then on, Jacob would look to God, not himself. The same is true for us. When we trust in Jesus, God changes us from the inside out. Jesus forgives our sin and adopts us into his family. When we are adopted into the family of God, we also receive a new name. We become children of God. So how does God change us when we trust in Jesus? Check out this video. Hey friends, I'm Pastor Brian. It's time for questions from kids. Reed from DeSoto, Texas asks, The Bible says that when we trust in Jesus, we're changed. Does that mean I'm no longer me? Reed, that's a great question. And we know that the Bible says that change is a big part of following God. That's what we saw in today's Bible story, didn't we? God was working in Jacob's life to change him into the person that God wanted him to be. When God works in a person's life, that person is changed. In fact, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that we are a new creation when we trust in Christ. We are changed to give God glory and we have a new purpose. But becoming a Christian does not mean that we lose our own personality and our identities. You were created in the image of God. God created you exactly the way he wanted you to be. But God changes you to be more like Jesus every day. That's why it matters that we become more and more like Jesus as we grow in our relationship with God so we can give him glory. How is God using you for his glory? Welcome to Name That Color Change. Uh, Wendy win a lot over here. Bet you didn't know this, but I win a lot. And I mean a lot. I could say that pretty much every game I play, I win. I don't know how it works. I can't explain it. I'm just really, really good at games. So I thought I'd play a game with you today. And uh, guess what? I'm probably going to win. Just saying. But here's how it's going to work. I've got the verse over here, which will be also on your screen to help you see. I have some ping pong balls and I have some water. And as you can see, the water is very clear and boring. But we are going to play color change if I can get one of these ping pong balls into here. And whatever color the water changes to is the color on our verse that the words will disappear. Make sense? If not, it will make sense as we go. Uh, now, the only problem is I have to win in order to play the game. So before we even start, let's read it together all with all the words there, okay? One, two, three. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Genesis 28, 15. Okay, here we go. How many of these ping pong balls do you think it's going to take me to get in there? I think because I'm Wendy Winnelot, I'm going to get it on the first try. What do you think? Here we go. Oh, I mean, that was somewhere. Uh, not quite where I was going. I win most of the time. Here we go. Oh, no. Win sometimes. Uh-oh. Uh, whoops, I'm really good at hitting the side, guys. And that one was coming straight for you. And, uh, yeah, okay. Are we, whoop, whoop, that one came right back to me. Kind of like a boomerang. Oh, ding, ding, have you guys 
guys ever played this at a carnival before? Is there any hope of me getting this in here? Ding! Okay, first ball in. Oh no, didn't mean to knock that over. Oh, all right. Uh, were you like starting to turn the video off because you were thinking this is hopeless? All right, so what color do you think that this water is going to change? Blue? Uh, I don't know, let's see. Oh, it turned yellowish orange. Can you see that? Well, kind of, I probably needed a little more color change in there. Um, anyways, we're going with orange on that one. Okay, so all of the orange words, so wherever, done, and Genesis are going to leave our verse. Let's try it together. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Genesis 28, 15. Great memory, you guys. You did a wonderful job without the orange words in our verse. Um, let's see if Wendy Winnelot can get another color change going on here. Ding! Oh, sorry. I forgot to mention the rule that once one gets color changed, it goes off to the side which makes it an added challenge. But, oh, that one was not even close at all. Cheer me on, I need a little extra help. I think maybe I need a new prescription on my glasses. What do you think? This is harder than it looks. Oh, all right. Uh, let's see uh, what color change we can get this time. Can you see that? It is a very, very light green. Can you see that? Uh, you can't see it in the baster, but it's a very light green. Okay, so all of the green words are coming out of our verse, and let's read it together. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Genesis 28, 15. Okay, we are eliminating the green one. We have one special one left over here. I'm going to just put that in there. Uh, maybe going to be even. Can I step a little bit forward? Can I cheat just a, a little bit? I mean, Wendy win a lot doesn't win all the time by not cheating a few times. Uh, don't take that advice. It's not nice to cheat. All right, here we go. Enough talking. Whoop! I'm going to need some more encouragement. I think it worked last time. Oh, I almost got it in one of the ones that we already finished with. All right, I've given up on that one. Oh, okay. Finally got it. Last time around, obviously, from our chart, you've probably picked up on what I'm doing. Uh, it is pink. All right, can you see that? Pink this time around. So one last time, nice and loud with me. Uh, we're uh, removing all of the pink words. All right, here we go. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Genesis 28, 15. That is an awesome promise that God had given to Jacob, that he didn't have to worry that God was going to go with him wherever he went. It didn't matter where he was, God was with him, and God is with us. So this is a verse that is encouraging both to Jacob and to you and to me. And well, once again, Wendy Winnelot has won the game. See you later, guys. Esau's act of forgiveness to Jacob reminds me of God's forgiveness to us through Jesus. No matter what we've done, Jesus is willing to forgive us when we turn to him. That alone is reason enough for me to stand up and to sing praises to his name. Would you join me? Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for saving me. Rescue from the middle of the ocean deep. Rescue from the middle of the ocean deep. You set my feet on solid ground. You set my feet on solid ground. I once was lost, but
this hard I didn't think I could fall so far But here I am How did I stray so far off course? How can I get back to the shore? Lord, here I am Jacob's name to Israel. And Jacob made a trip back to Canaan where Esau forgave him for the trickery that happened almost 20 years earlier. Jacob no longer had to fear. He was finally home. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for this morning. And I thank you that you are with us wherever we go, just like you were with Jacob everywhere that he went. And even though Jacob made mistakes and he didn't follow you 100% of the time, God, you were still with him and you still promised to make him into a great nation. And so God, we thank you for the promises that you give us. And God, would you forgive us when we make mistakes? And God, we just thank you again for this morning. Would you go with us and would you be with us today? In Jesus' name, amen.